At first, understanding the Bible seems a daunting task because there is so much material and lots of pieces. However, the task becomes much simpler if you can find the divinely provided keys that identify what is going on. In Amos 3.7, we are told, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secret counsel to His servants, the prophets. As it turns out, we are given clear information as to what God is doing and how the big story would play out. Elsewhere, we have noted key number one, the central plot first identified in Genesis 3.15. The strife between the serpent and humanity will culminate in the coming of a male Messiah, born of a woman, to deal the serpent a fatal blow to the head, although in doing so, the Messiah will himself be wounded. God marked out the Messiah's genealogical lineage, and that trail led to Jesus. The second key piece in the puzzle came a little later in Genesis, when God hinted at two major eras that would unfold as he made promises to three men in the Messiah's lineage. Have you ever noticed how often the Bible associates the Messianic hope and what God was doing with Israel? to the land, covenant, and promises that God swore to the fathers? Or to the patriarchs by name, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? While the same promises were passed on to Isaac, Abraham's son, and Jacob, Abraham's grandson, we will look at the initial promises made to the patriarch, Abraham. First, God promised to bless and protect the patriarchs personally, for all of the you comments here are singular. Second, God told them that he would make their descendants, the twelve tribes descended from Jacob, renamed Israel, a nation in the land of Canaan. This promise was fulfilled as God moved Israel to Egypt, and then to Canaan 400 years later. On the way to Canaan, Moses was told to lead Israel to Mount Sinai, where God made a covenant with the descendants of the patriarchs, the Israelites, that would function as a law system to govern their national life in Canaan. In Galatians 3, 16 to 26, the Apostle Paul explained that this covenant was temporarily added to the earlier messianic promise to Abraham to function as a tutor for Israel until the promised Messiah arrived. Moses and Joshua got them to Canaan. Then the later judges and prophets struggled to keep them faithful to that covenant. Third, the ultimate goal of God's program revealed to the fathers was that Israel's national era in Canaan was to be followed by an era during which Messiah's blessings would be offered to all of the nations or families of the earth. Blessings offered to all nations was the goal of God's eternal purpose revealed to the fathers and it was a prominent repeated theme in the Psalms and Prophets. In Galatians chapter 3 verses 6 through 9 Paul explained that God had always planned to justify Gentiles on the same basis as Abraham, righteousness by faith. The third element in the promises to the fathers, in you shall all the nations be blessed, was referring to the gospel. The current age was not unknown to the prophets or a plan B, but the era in which God tried to make the descendants of the patriarchs the 12 tribes of Israel, a nation in Canaan, was predicted to culminate in the Messiah's appearance to deal with our serpent and sin problem by his suffering and death. Then the Messiah's blessings of forgiveness and eternal life were to be offered to all nations, as is happening now, as the gospel is sent to all nations, according to the Great Commission.
Isaiah 49, verse 6, foretold that the Messiah would first try to gather Israel, but then become a light to the Gentiles, so that God's salvation could reach to the ends of the earth. In John 17, 1 through 4, as Jesus approached his death and resurrection, he believed that he had fulfilled his mission. The two men on the road to Emmaus were bummed out about Jesus' death, but he rebuked them for failing to understand what the prophets were looking ahead to. And in Acts 2 and 3, we see that Peter came to realize that what occurred in Jesus' first coming was exactly what God had intended and the prophets had predicted. In Romans 15, verses 8 and 9, Paul understood that Jesus came to the Jews to show God's truthfulness and to confirm the promises to the fathers that the nations, or Gentiles, might glorify God for his mercy. In Ephesians 2, 11, through chapter 3, verse 11, Paul explained that now, in Jesus, believing Jews and Gentiles have been joined as equals in a new body, are God's household, and this was in accordance with God's eternal purpose. This is why the apostles saw Jesus' first coming as inaugurating the last days, the last times, and the final age for this earth.